Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on solving equations by multiplying or dividing. Here's what you'll learn. How to solve one-step equations by using multiplication or division. Now, the goal in solving equations is to find a solution. But if your equation contains a variable or a letter, you're trying to solve for the value of the variable. And to solve for a variable, you must isolate the variable. That means we want to get the variable by itself on one side of the equation. Your equation should end up looking like this. The variable equals a number. For example, p equals 16. Let's look at the following equation. 5 times v equals 20. Now, you can probably figure out that v is 4 in this equation because 5 times 4 is 20. It's very simple. But let's look at how we solve this simple problem for the variable v. Then we can apply the same method to more complicated problems. Our goal is to end up with an equation that reads v equals a number. We want to have the v by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. That means we have to get rid of or cancel out any and all numbers on the same side of the equation. In this case, we only have one number. We need to cancel out 5. We can do that by performing the opposite or inverse operation using the number we're trying to eliminate. Now, take a look at the equation again. What operation is being performed between the 5 and v? If you said multiplication, you're correct. We have 5 times v. That means we have to divide by 5 to remove it from that side of the equation. So let's go ahead and write divide by 5 under the left-hand side. Dividing 5 by itself effectively cancels that coefficient because any number divided by itself is just 1. So we end up with 1v. And 1 times v is just v, which is exactly what we want to have on the left side of the equation. But remember, we need to keep our equation balanced. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. And since we divided the left side by 5, we need to also divide the right side by 5. So let's put 20 divided by 5 on the right-hand side. And 20 divided by 5 equals 4. And so v equals 4 is our answer. Now let's check to see if we're right. Here's what we can do. The original equation was 5 times v equals 20. We think v is 4. So we're going to replace v with a 4. And I'm going to write down 5 times 4. Does that equal 20? And sure enough, when I multiply 5 and 4, I find out that 20 does equal 20. So we know that our solution is correct. Let's solve this equation. x divided by 7 equals 15. And let's check our answer. First, let's write down the equation. x divided by 7 equals 15. And in order to isolate the variable x, we need to cancel out the 7. What operation is being performed with the 7? Take a look at just the left-hand side. Reading the left side of the equation tells us x is being divided by the number 7. So to remove the 7 from that side, we need to perform the opposite or inverse operation using the 7, which is multiplication. So let's multiply both sides now by 7. We have to multiply both sides to keep our equation balanced. So I'll write times 7 on the left and multiply the 15 by 7 on the right. Now, the 7's on the left cancel out. Now, it may not look like it because it may look like we're multiplying them, but please note, we didn't cancel 7 times 7 on the left. We actually have 7 divided by 7 on that side, and let me show you why. Let's write this a different way. I can write the 7 that we just placed on the left as a fraction by putting a 1 underneath it, since 7 divided by 7 is still 1. So let's go ahead and change the 7 to 7 over 1, just like that. There we go. Now it's easier to see why the 7's cancel. Because when multiplying fractions, a number in the numerator of one fraction 
will cancel with the same number in the denominator of another fraction. So the sevens have canceled. And now we're left with just x over 1, or x divided by 1, and of course that's just x. So we've now isolated our variable x on the left side of the equation. On the right side, we now multiply 15 and 7, and that gives us 105. And so x equals 105. That's our answer. Let's go ahead and check and see if that's right. Replace x in the original equation with 105. So I'll write 105 divided by 7. Does that give me 15? And when I do 105 divided by 7, I find out that sure enough, I have 15 on both sides of the equation, so that answer is correct. Let's solve the equation 360 equals 30 times h and check our answer. First, write down the equation. 360 equals 30 times h. Now, in this case, our h, or variable, is on the right side of the equal sign. Now, that's OK, because it really doesn't matter what side the variable is located on. But for consistency, let's go ahead and move it to the left-hand side, because that's where I've had all of the variables in prior examples. This is really easy to do, and let me show you how we do that. Take everything from the right side and move it to the left side. And don't change any operations or signs on the terms. Take it in bulk and just move it over just like this. So now the 30h is on the left. And then take everything from the left side and move it to the right. Just like that. And there you are. It's as simple as that. You're done. Now, in order to isolate our variable h, we need to cancel out the 30. What operation is being performed with 30? If you said multiplication, that's correct. We have 30 times h on that side. That's the way it reads. So to remove the 30 from that side, we need to perform the opposite or inverse operation using 30, which is division. Very good. We have to divide both sides by 30 to keep the equation balanced. So let me divide both sides by 30. There's the left side and the right side divided by 30. Now the 30 cancels top and bottom on the left-hand side. 30 divided by 30 is just 1. And all that remains then is our isolated variable h. So we'll bring that down to a new line in our equation. And on the right, 360 divided by 30 is 12. So we have 12 on the right-hand side. And our answer is h equals 12. Now let's make sure that's right. We can go ahead and check our answer by replacing h in the original equation with our number 12. So 360, does that equal 30 times 12? And sure enough, when we multiply 30 and 12 together, we find out that both sides of our equation equal 360. So our answer has to be correct. Good job. And let's do a final word problem example. Tickets to a baseball game cost $12 per person. If Suzanne purchased $192 worth of tickets, how many tickets did she buy? Now, first we have to turn the words in the problem into an equation that we can solve. The total amount for tickets for the game was $192. Total means equals. So we can start writing our equation equals 192. And we also know each person is paying $12 for a ticket. Now, let's suppose that three people were going. The total cost would be $12 plus $12 plus $12. That's repeated addition, which is multiplication. So we could also write that as $12 times 3. In this problem, we don't know how many tickets she purchased, so we're going to use a variable t to represent the number of tickets or the number of people going to the baseball game. Then we can write $12 times an unknown number of tickets as 12 times t. So the left side of our equation will contain 12t. Now that we have our equation, we can solve for t, the number of tickets Suzanne purchased for the baseball game. 
To isolate the variable t, we need to cancel out the number 12. And we do that by dividing both sides by 12 to keep the equation balanced. So I'll divide the left by 12 and the right by 12. Obviously, 12 divided by 12 on the left effectively cancels out the 12s, turns them into a 1, and leaves us with just the variable t on the left-hand side. Now on the right, 192 divided by 12 turns out to be 16. So t is going to equal 16. But that's not our final answer, because this is a word problem. Our answer needs to be written words. So we're going to say, Suzanne purchased 16 tickets. And don't forget, if you'd like to check your answer, simply substitute 16 for t back in the original equation and verify that both sides equal 192. Congratulations! You've learned how to solve one-step equations by using multiplication or division.